This is exploratory. We're, we're, we're yeah. meant to make mistakes and run into dead ends. Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Joke Writing. Uh, before we begin, if you like this type of content, give us a like, comment, and subscribe. And before we get into the meat of it, do you want to introduce yourself? Comic with me today. Uh, yes, hey guys, I my name is Jen Brown and I've been uh, doing stand-up for about a year and a half now and uh, I live in Greenville, South Carolina. So today uh, we have an episode of Writing Jokes where we I sort of like focused on the comic about making a big premise-based bit. This this time I want to I want to stay in the pocket of sort of like realer bits using real truth to add comedy. And I have an exercise I will uh, uh, bring us through to help facilitate that. But uh, do you want to sort of like explain what we are generally talk talking about, what worlds we are in? Uh, today with these jokes. Yes. Um, okay. So I um, have a cat and I see like all these people, you know, on Instagram posting like their adorable sweet cat stuff and my cat's really evil. Um, and so my premise is just that um, I feel like I'm in an abusive relationship with my cat because he's like really beautiful. Um, and, but he's a jerk. So kind of, I uh, was thinking about, you know, comparing it to like dating a, a beautiful jerk. Oh, okay. I.e. Like, me. Oh, no. Um, okay. Okay. Great. So a lot of times when I'm when I'm doing more true based comedy instead of premise based comedy, I usually ask the comedian and like not trying to be funny. What's the truest emotion we can we can say about something? And you usually get a laugh. We sort of already have it about like he's a he's a beautiful jerk. But is there a, any other like truth bombs that you can drop just about you, your relationship with your cat, or your feelings towards this that might just be jokes in and of themselves without us having to like add any uh, zhuzh to them? <laughs> um, well, I mean, I guess just that, you know, I was excited to get a cat. Um, I got it for um, our family. My, I have two daughters and, um, you know, we got him as a kitten. We made, we like went out through all this. We we're like, let's get him as a kitten so that we can make sure he's, you know, raised well and, and he's really sweet and stuff. And, and, um, he just basically just, uh, you know, we treated him wonderfully and he just still turned into just a very, just a mean cat. So at least to my comedy mind, it, it, it is, it is really funny that it's, that it's like, it's, it's not an adopted cat. You raised the cat. So if, if it's anyone's fault that it's an asshole, <laughs> right. You know, like we we just have ourselves to blame. Like that's just a true thing. But it is it's, it's funny in and of itself that like you know if I adopted a cat, at least I could be like it's lived a tough life. This that, but no, like we yeah. is this who we is this who we are? You know, is this just, yeah, so like that's that's a fun like a true true thing to to just like drop. It, as far as like, were there conversations leading up to getting the cat? Like, we obviously got a cat, not a dog. It seems like the whole family was aligned. Like, you, you said the phrase like, "We I got a cat for the family," but like, was it really for the family or was it for you? There's joke, like I don't know what the truth, but there might be truth in sort of yeah. these jokes. I wanted a dog, but we felt like a dog would be a lot more work than a cat. So, and our kids wanted a pet, and we promised them that we would get them a pet. So we were like, "Let's just get a cat. They're easy." Um, so really. Um, they love cats and dogs, and I, I was okay with cats, but I, I was not like in love with them. I really wanted a dog, but um, I was like, oh, dogs are too much. You gotta train them too much and stuff. So, uh, so basically, yeah. he was yeah. like, like I didn't even want him, but I treat still treated him really well, you know, because he was a cute kid. <laughs> I mean, there's something funny, like, I don't even want him. I don't know why he's an asshole. I know, that sounds bad. <laughs> as far as, like, mi mining more out of this cat, we've said the cat is an asshole. Do we want to get into the specifics of why or how? Um, I mean, he, I guess, like, when, you know, you don't bite the hand that feeds you, he tries to bite us while we try to feed him. Like, he wants to be fed, and as I'm putting food in his bowl, he'll, like, bite me, even though he wants me to put food in this bowl. So I think that's, you know pretty much a jerk and um and i think the funniest but most horrible one maybe is that he's i w went had to go to urgent care of like a month ago because he was sitting in my lap just like purring all happy on the blanket and i was just you know sitting there and then all of a sudden he i, I like petted his you know his back and all of a sudden he just jumped up and grabbed my arm and bit me and i had to go to to the urgent care because it's 
it was swell, swelling up and I had to take antibiotics and everything. And we still have this cat. Yeah. And, and this is, this is the low, the low effort pet. Can you imagine what a dog would have been, you know, this, so it's fun. Like, we we got this. a low effort pet, but it turned out to not be low effort. That's a fun thing that we could, we could bring back and, and, and uh, have a juxtaposition. I like, I like this thing about like, you know, don't, don't bite the, don't, uh, bite the hand that feeds you. Uh, yeah. That's his favorite thing to do. Uh, like you know, that that's just a fun, true using a statement. If we were going more premise based, we could build up on that and say like more sayings and that that are usually like, hey, treat people well that treat you well. Like you know, the golden rule: treat others how you'd like to be treated. He apparently wants to be, but like we could we could dig into that premise. But I'm trying to stick to to real truthy pithy things as, as we we stay in this pocket. So right now, for those for those watching it at home. Uh, as, as far as like what what real tactics am I doing right now? All I'm doing is I'm I'm trying to uh, uh, ask ask questions and as an audience mind think about like oh how would I feel about that? What is what are my curiosity about? Like, oh yeah, an asshole cat. Well, why'd you get an asshole cat? And then trying to find the truth that answers that thing so that we can validate what the audience's experience of this information um, uh, delineation journey is and um, and fulfill it in true ways instead of getting a crazy wacky but what did you see how much like we've already been able to pull out just out without even really being like jokey joke yet right uh great and then what are what are your like we we think the cat is an asshole but i'm sure our actual feelings go deeper than that do you take joy out of the cat or is it mostly like i got this for my family this is my family's cat i um yeah i do i like it when he i also do like it when he sits in my lap you know and he purrs sometimes but then sometimes like if i'm just like no, I don't want. So if I don't want him to sit in my lap, I can't use a blanket. Like if I, <laughs> when I have a blanket in my lap, he comes for me. And so then I have to like move my legs so he won't sit on me. So sometimes and I'm not in the mood to like fight him oh. sitting on me. I just like don't even have a blanket because, I mean, and then I won't sit on I, you without a blanket. I, I, I mean, <laughs> honestly, without going premise based at all, we've sort of found a fun physical bit we can do with the audience about like, I, if, if I don't want him to sit on me, I can't wear a blanket or I have to like move like, oh no, you can't, like we could be on a stool, like mm -mm -mm. I have to make it un, un oh, my lap unsittable, you yeah, know, and we can have, we can have fun doing whatever that physicality is. We're like, no, 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 right. no, no. And it, it's like, uh, uh, as far as building building that out, and that it's, it was a true thing. Like I don't, we haven't taken any big swings. We haven't gone into a ma imaginary ideological world, and we've got like a full fun act out we can do in in the vein of this cat, at least in you know uh, my money. And we can even be like, I'll sit like this, right here, right here. Like we can even do these like crazy positions that he shouldn't be able to sit in, and how he finds a way to achieve, achieve it if we want. Do we want to go through um, the the ex exercise? Um, uh, with I think I think it'll usually it's for objects, but it'll work with cats as far as like a way to, to mine even more out of this. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Great. So for for those for those watching at home, the the invocation is an uh, is is usually used as a long form improv opener. It usually taken you take an object and you are trying to pull as much ideas out of that object. And the the original conceit of the invocation is that it's like a um a a ritual to the god of whatever the blank is that you're using and it starts by taking its physical form and it grows up until basically you're the the spiritual avatar of this thing. For example, there's I I pulled an actual example so we can get more more specific. It starts with just like it is, and it's just very uh, 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 actual physical descriptions of the object. So, example, if we were going to do uh, a, a rock, because I'm going to do a stand-up set where a rock is involved, uh, oh, you might say things like, it is small, it is dark, it is hard, uh, it, is, it is sharp. We're just, we're just literally saying um, physical parts of that uh, object. Then you move up to you are, and it's sort of like if... If this object or thing was a friend, how would you relate to it uh, uh, as, as far as like, you know, you are what I sit in, in nature. You are what I, what I throw at angry cars. You, you, you will always listen, but never talk. You're the pet that people don't want if we're doing like uh, a rock. Then we move up. We're moving from the physical to like the spiritual. Now we're moving thou art as in like how the object relates to the society more poetic words like you are the original technology or sorry thou art the original technology rock thou <laughs> art everywhere uh, thou art the embodiment of hardness and then then you fully go up the sort of like 
avatar a spiritual possession and then it is i am is it as if it has uh, encapsulated your body and those are things about like how do you feel about it definitive statements of power or action and sometimes it can get blurred between uh, thou art and i am and you're like i am uh, uh i am earth crust i am baseline hardness I am, uh, and, and we sort of like go up into uh, uh, being possessed by the object. Okay, how, okay, how is this useful in stand-up? For example, if I was gonna mention The Rock, I could be like, so we, we played this game in my family called Rock, where you would throw rocks at each other. You know rocks, the original technology, small, <laughs> hard, sharp, like you can, you can drop these. And if the audience likes one of those more poetic things that I said about it, original technology, I already have tag runs of other things to add on top of it. And, and, and so it, it allows us to get a bunch of material from, from that object. And it's just a, a very good way to, uh, to if, if you have a short joke about an object that you need, you can get a lot of material for it real fast. So for example, do we want to try this exercise with cat? It is um, small, uh, furry. Uh, I imagine it is, it is beautiful. Beautiful. It is cute. Yeah. yeah, yeah. One second. Some some of these blur together. Like it could be you are, but it could be an it is. So don't 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 think too much about like is it it perfectly in this bucket? But it's also it is mean. <laughs> great, 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 great. And then okay, so let, let's start to do the the you are. So like you you are not as nice as I thought you would be. Uh, you are evil. <laughs> sure, you are evil. You are not welcome in this lap. Uh, <laughs> you know. You are not what I hoped for. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's let's then we could also try to do some. some oh yeah, once again, it's, it's just fun. We're just getting more emotion. I mean, we already had some of these emotions when we were going through the interview. But if we hadn't gone to the interview, these same things pop out, and we could have found them using this. But if if we want to move into thou art, thou art others love, but my hate. Like we could we could inject that uh, right. uh, sort of feelings here. But right. where would you put the thou art if you were if we were going to keep ramping up with cat? I don't know. So, so just think about honestly, like think about the the U R's, but think about like. A more like like Shakespearean poetical language to describe like the the things that it embodies the the like the technical description of the the thou art part of is how does the object relate to society poetic descriptions of status power and role and then action words like thou uh, art uh, our family's terror <laughs> oh great yeah. well, if you had to have the the sort of like point of view of your cat uh you know what, what would you do um. I mean, I, I guess I don't know if it's big enough. Like, just I was thinking maybe in one of these, uh, I am afraid to walk past you. <laughs> like, oh, 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 oh. so, so th yeah, that could that could work. Um, uh, yeah, that could work if it was like the you know you you are what makes me afraid to walk down the hallway. But the I am needs to be in the 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 point yeah. of view of the cat. So it's like <laughs> I am your uh, your fear of walking. We could reframe that as an I am. Yeah. Oh yeah, I am the king of the castle. Uh, he Great. thinks. Uh, I don't know. I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah no worries. Like, you can be like, <laughs> I am beauty. We don't have to be perfect. It's a, it's an exploratory exercise. So for those watching after the fact, don't fear like, oh, fudge, that one didn't work. The, the true purpose of this is to draw material. So even if we run into a dead end, we can, we can maybe use that about like, oh man, uh, you may, like even the thing you just said about, it uh, makes me afraid to walk around in my house. You can still use that even though we, it sort of didn't fit exactly where we were in the exercise. We still found something we could use when we go back to our standup. Well, I don't know. This might be more premise than, uh, I, I don't know. I'll just say it and then you can tell me. If yeah. People are, you know, worried about like technology listening to them. And my joke is just that like, I'm a mom and a teacher and a wife and like no one listens to me. And so if the technology wants to listen to me, then I'm all for it. <laughs> like, oh, at least as, as far as, as far as truth based jokes and your feelings. Mm -hmm. Great. That's a great truth. We can then extend that in. So like if we're staying with like truth, truth based comedy, we'd probably keep talking. We'd move on after dropping that one. But there's also a full premise that we can bet better like, Hey, Mr. A AI, you want to hear about my day? Of course, I want to hear about your day. Oh, I did this, I did that. You are so interesting. I consider you more than a mom and a teacher and a wife. Oh, AI, you always have my ear. Would you also like to purchase new chicken fajita at Taco Bell? Oh, I would. Meanwhile, I'm like, daughter, I love you. Shut up, mom. I'm petting the cat. You know, and we could even uh, <laughs> call back to things. Like, that's, well, that's, that's bigger into a premise. But it all comes off the foundation of I think as a one-liner joke, the thing about like you know, look, I'm a I'm a I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a teacher. No one listens to me. 
please, AI, please come. Like, that's a great non-premise space, more truth uh, 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 joke if we just want to leave it at that too, 100%. If you are still watching, give us a like, comment, and subscribe. Both of our socials will be in the description of this YouTube video if you want to see more of any of our comedy. Hey, check out other videos, other writing in different styles. And do you want to say a word of parting for audiences that might be watching after the fact? Anything you want to plug, et cetera, et cetera? Um, just um, if you want to, I post some of my things on, oh my gosh, on uh, Jen Brown Insta is what I have on Instagram. Great, 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 great. Mar mar marvelous. Great, great. It's been a pleasure. And once again, if you have any one-on-one uh, -on -one questions, hey, feel free. Don't be a stranger. We can reach out. And, th and thank you again. Thank you again for your time and, and helping make this content. Thank you so much.